Welcome to part two of my visual diary series that covers my trip to several islands in the South Pacific. This part will cover our time spent on New Georgia. I will give you brief facts about each of the locations mentioned, and I hope you enjoy. Situated to the northeast of Australia in the South Pacific, New Georgia is part of the Solomon Islands chain. The island of New Georgia itself is about 45 miles long and 30 miles wide. Munda is the largest settlement on the island of New Georgia and is located at the southern coast. Most of the population resides on the southern coast of the island. There's a remoteness to the Solomon Islands in general, but when you land at the tiny airstrip in Munda, it becomes even further perceptible. After disembarking from the plane, our lodge was just a five minute walk from the tiny airport. As on Guadalcanal, Munda Airfield was the American objective of the Central Solomons campaign. From late July until early August 1943, the airfield was a battle area between the Japanese and combined Allied forces. After 12 days of continuous and bitter fighting in the vicinity, the airfield was captured. Munda Airfield is still in use today. It's serviced by Solomon Airlines with daily domestic flights from Honiara Airport. Barney Paulson operates the Peter Joseph World War II Museum in Munda. The museum is a modest shed built beside Barney's home, and he's the closest thing to a World War II historian in these parts. His personal collection of relics is fascinating. Numerous small arms, grenades, bullets, first aid kits, mess tins, coke bottles, trench knives, helmets, and many other personal items. From his treasure box, Barney pulled out a handful of dog tags to show us. Many of the men who fought in this area were New England natives, like Brian and I. I felt very close to home knowing that so many men from my local area were out here fighting in the summer of 1943. In Guadalcanal, an American task force assembled supplies and firepower for another offensive. Our objective was the air and naval base at Munda. We planned to pound Munda with our big artillery by first seizing Rondova five miles away. Crucial jobs for all in this task force. Barney would take us around in the days to come by way of small boat, which was expertly operated by Billy. We would be island hopping our way around the western province. It was really invigorating. Travel among the many islands of the New Georgia group is done almost totally by sea. Scattered around Munda are countless World War II relics and dump sites. The front garden of one house features two Japanese anti-aircraft guns which remain where the Japanese left them when they fled. At the rear of the same house, just beyond the clothesline, is an overgrown World War II dump area where U.S. landing boats have been piled up. Bibilo Hill is a feature that overlooks Munda Point. This was part of the Munda Airfield battle area. Barney brought us up to get a view and then took us down to an army dump site where we found numerous discarded personal items like mess kits and surprisingly rubber boot heels. We explored the tunnels at Kokongolo Hill, which were cleared out by the U.S. Army's 43rd Division, along with numerous bunkers and pillboxes in the area. The caves were stocked with rice, bales of clothing, blankets, and occupation currency. On our drive up to Noro in the Munda vicinity, Barney brought us to see some Japanese anti-aircraft guns. This area became a CB camp following the battle. Brian was interested in visiting Inogai and the Dragon's Peninsula at the northern part of New Georgia. This area was assaulted by the 1st Marine Raiders supported by the U.S. Army's 145th Infantry Division on July 10, 1943. Inogai was captured at the cost of 51 American dead and roughly 350 Japanese dead. Afterwards, the Marines posed with the captured 140mm naval guns. The undamaged weapons were still in operating condition. After a long day on the water, we docked at Lombaria. This was a former PT boat base in Rendova Harbor. Kennedy's infamous PT-109 was based out of this port. There's a little memorial on the island which details the famous story of Kennedy and his crew. Barney also pointed out the submerged dock through the clear glassy water. Located three miles east of Munda Airfield is Zanana Beach. The American Army's 172nd Infantry landed here on July 2nd and 3rd, 1943. We began driving up a winding jungle trail that was improved by the Seabees during World War II. At what seemed like a totally random spot, 
we hopped out on foot and entered thick jungle. Barney knows this area well, and within a minute pointed out several Japanese foxhole positions. This area became known by the Americans as Bloody Hill, as a Japanese platoon had established a trail block in this area. Three days of intense fighting would take place here as multiple frontal assaults were beaten back by withering machine gun fire from well dug in and camouflaged positions on the hill. It wasn't hard to imagine the struggle. There's also the remains of a Japanese truck in the area. Odonga Airfield was an allied airfield built on New Georgia in 1943. The Seabees constructed a ring road around this that is still passable, but rough and very overgrown. We had some fun trying to make it all the way around the abandoned airfield. In this area we were shown a wrecked plane and some other equipment. On August 27, 1943, U.S. Army's 27th Infantry, supported by Marine Corps M3A1 Stewart tanks, landed on Arundel Island, expecting to mop up scattered Japanese forces. As they advanced inland, they encountered entrenched defenders and were required to send in reinforcements. Tanks became frequently bogged down or unable to navigate and became prime targets for Japanese anti-tank units. Today, one of the M3A1 Stewart tanks remains exactly where it was disabled on September 17, 1943. Columbangara is a circular volcanic island located to the north of New Georgia. We hopped off the boat to check out the airfield and base area at this location. The Japanese abandoned and withdrew from this island by October 1943. As no fighting occurred, the Americans swiftly moved on to the next island, ignoring the tunnel systems. This tunnel and more all around Vila had once served as a subterranean home and field hospital for Imperial soldiers. Barney really took us off the beaten track to get to this spot, and it was absolutely amazing. It's moments like this that made this trip spectacular. There's a small island close to Lola Island, aptly named Skull Island. It's one of the most sacred areas in the region. It provides an insight into the fierce head-hunting history of local warriors. The shrine houses weathered and sinister looking skulls of Rendovan chiefs. I think that one of the things I found striking about New Georgia is the stunning beauty and unspoiled character of the region. It's a bit of an adventure just getting there. Thanks to the efforts of guys like Brian and Barney, we have a deeper understanding of how significant this place is. As the World War II wrecks slowly decay into the forest and underwater, I hope our memory of what happens here remains. In retrospect, I'm grateful that we had such a unique and memorable trip to the Solomons. Today, the country primarily attracts scuba divers and sometimes World War II history buffs. Sadly, commercial logging is gradually decimating the rainforests of the western province, taking away so much of what makes this place unique. I hope you enjoyed part two. Stay tuned for the rest of the series. Part three will cover our experiences on Fiji, which lies to the southeast of the Solomon Islands.